Hey, good morning to you. Happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you an update on this Arctic blast that is still coming and bringing very cold temperatures, not only to the upper Midwest, but to the south and the southeast. Now, this is still getting a strong surface low, a monster of a storm that is going to go up to the northeast. And so far, it's 940, 950 millibar nor'easter. Very strong hurricane strength. Now I'm going to go through the impacts and what you can expect out of this storm. If you've never been here before, hello. My name is Mark. I do upload all year long. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that bell. I just don't upload from Friday from sundown to sundown Saturday. That is Sabbath. But always make sure you're covered before Sabbath starts. Now I need y'all to share the video or at least hit the like button on the video because we have a very cold temperatures coming. We need to warn a lot of people. And I'm showing it's gotten even colder since the last update on this blast. Now it is showing southern snow right now, so I will show you the chances of that as well. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. Remember, all the links are in the description to help save you time. Hope you have a very blessed and a very great Monday today. Now for today, the storms are still moving towards the northeast and you still have chances for tornadoes. It's just 2%. It's a small chance, but you still have a chance. Plus, it's bringing damage and winds with it. I did show you that the other day. It's 50 to almost 60 miles per hour wind gusts, but no hail is expected out of the storms for today. But here's your cities and states that's in the tornado threat for today. Nashville, Tennessee, Lexington, Fayette, Kentucky, Birmingham, Alabama, Knoxville, Tennessee, and Huntsville, Alabama. And as this goes through today, it will bring 50 miles per hour wind gusts all across Tennessee, Kentucky Valley and go up to the northeast with 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts for y'all as well. It is stronger offshore, but luckily it is staying offshore 60 to 70 miles per hour wind gusts. But y'all will be getting 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts as this storm passes by. Now we still have flash flooding problems and according to National Weather Service for the next one to two days, this is your precipitation amount. And you can see on the left that it starts getting one to almost two inches as you get from that purple towards that red. And that red is three inches plus. But as you go towards three days, you see it starts adding up as you go towards the 10th. Then we got that storm coming through as you go through the one through five days. And this is putting major rainfall in the southeast for Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, Florida. And that orange you see right there is anywhere from four to seven inches of precipitation expected. And that's within the next five days. Now for today, your flash flooding is marginal risk in all this green and a slight risk in this yellow. As you go through tomorrow, this will go into the south with this marginal risk for flash flooding. And then the day after is going to move to the east and southeast with a marginal chance for flash flooding. Now as you look at your AO, your Arctic Oscillation, this lets you know when this cold air is coming down to our country and how far. You can see that according to the GFS that we do have a good dip of cold air coming around the 9th or the 10th. And we have another one coming around the 13th or 14th, not as cold. This is where it's swinging to the northeast. Then we're going to be on a big warm-up after that and a possible cold front coming later. But that's still two weeks away. And you know how inaccurate that would be. But for now, we have the one in the south that's showing cold air it is coming. And then it's going to be a little less for the 13th and 14th as it goes to the northeast. That's why more than likely a lot of y'all are going to be getting rain. Also, when you look at the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, lets you know when you go down into a trough or a big ridge, it lets you know that we do go down into a trough around the 9th or 10th when we get this cold air, so it will go into the south. But when it goes to the 13th and 14th to the northeast, it don't come down too deep. So it will be in our coastal northeast and not straight off into the Atlantic Ocean and giving all y'all snowfall. It will be a lot of rain. And that cold air coming later in March, there's a chance for it to be another deep dip of cold air, but it's not trending and it's only shown for the last couple runs. I will update you as we get a little bit closer. Now, so far, when we go to the 11th, this is Friday, guys, this cold air is going to start coming down and in the early morning hours, it is going to be overnight, early morning cold temperatures. It's going to bring Texas down into the 20s while the upper Midwest is going to be single digits to negative temperatures once again. And everybody else is going to be on an okay warm up. But when you look at the wind chill factors, you can see that it does put Texas in single digit feel like temperatures, as well as everybody else in the central U.S. and the upper Midwest. You're going to feel like negative 15 to negative 20 something degrees. It's going to be very cold wind chill that comes by, but everybody else is still going to be pretty warm. But it will be overnight, early morning hours. So your highs for the day will warm right back up. But you do have a cold spill of cold air that's right here in the south. We have the system moving through 
bringing this cold air on a wraparound. So DFW, you do have the best chances for getting this snowfall that does come down to the south while everybody else does warm back up. Then on Saturday the 12th, you're going to wake up with colder temperatures further into the south and southeast. This is going to be a three-day event, guys. It's going to put Texas in 20s once again, as well as Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Y'all all going to be in the low 20s. And even lower down Mississippi, you're going to be right on the edge of freezing. So just be aware, Danny and Wanda, I know you're down there. I love you guys. You're the best. You are going to be very cold come the morning of Saturday the 12th. And it's going to be right on the edge, man. In the upper Midwest, you're going to be in the negative 20 degree temperatures. It is going to be very cold for the upper Midwest once again with single digits coming to the central U.S. and teen temperatures to the Ohio Valley. But with the wind chills, it's going to make it awful, guys. Not only is it bringing negative 10 to 15 degree feels like temperatures over the central U.S., in the south, you're going to feel like you're in teen temperatures once again for Texas. But you also got it for the south and southeast where you're going to feel like single digits up to four, five, and six degrees. While with the wind chills for lower Mississippi, you're going to be feeling like you're in the 20s with this cold chill going across Alabama and Georgia as well. But once again, that is not going to be your highs for Saturday. It is going to warm right back up and you will be out of freezing conditions except for the upper half of the deep south. Your highs are going to be 29, 30 degrees. Very cold temperatures, guys. But it will warm right back up and then the next day happen right again. And the third day, Sunday on the 13th, it is going to bring freezing temperatures to the southeast once again. And it's bringing 20s all the way down to the deep south. Even the panhandle of Florida could be 29, 30 degree temperatures. So once again, you have to watch out for them falling the iguanas. I know they do start falling once it gets below 50 degrees. Then after this, it's going to go up to the northeast. And with the wind chills, it's going to be ridiculous again for Sunday as well. You're going to be feeling like you're in the 20s now for the panhandle of Florida. And as you go towards Tampa, you're going to be feeling like you're 29, 30 degree temperatures with all these wind chills as it passes through. With everybody else in the 20s, single digits is what you're going to feel like for the Ohio Valley. And the Northeast is going to feel like negative temperatures because of the wind chills. But once again, it is going to warm right back up. That will not be your highs for that day. It will just be overnight to the early morning hours, and this will last two to three days. But it will warm right back up, especially for Sunday. As it goes up to the northeast, and you can see how the coast of the northeast is above freezing temperatures, and the intercoastal northeast is still frozen. That's why you're going to see snowfall in intercoastal and rainfall on the northeast. And I'll show you the chances of that getting snow. And then as we go all the way to Wednesday, where I'll show you that very high ridge, it's going to bring all these warm temperatures all the way up to where Wisconsin is going to feel like you're in the 50 degrees. This is Wednesday by the 16th before that next potential dip. Plus, it's going to bring some severe weather as, as well. As you look, we're on Friday the 11th, and this is your dew points. And as you can see from 3 o'clock in the morning and on, it starts raising up these strong dew points while you get this cold front as this pushes through all evening for Friday all the way to early in the morning for Saturday for the coast. This is some very strong dew points. 60 on one side, 40 on another, guys. I can tell you this is going to bring a lot of severe weather with it. And you can see here with the lightning that it from 3 o'clock in the morning and on, it does bring a lot of lightning strikes all morning long for the south and southeast. As it moves to the evening for just the southeast, bringing all these lightning storms, guys, and bringing damaging winds with it as well as it moves across to the coast. Bringing storms all the way up to Maryland and Delaware and to New Jersey by Saturday. This is going to be a long storm, and it is going to go deep in the south and then high ridge to the northeast, bringing all this severe weather with it. And it's going to bring some damage in winds. You can see on a 500 millibar height that it starts swinging in this very high winds, and it gets very strong winds as it goes towards the southeast for Saturday, and then it goes up to the northeast, and the worst of the winds will be along the coast. Then it gets hurricane strength, very strong. Luckily, most of the winds will be east side loaded. It will be in the ocean, but it is bringing winds with it as this storm swings by. And you can see this when you look at the wind gust. This is a 50 miles per hour wind gust that y'all are getting with this storm now that's going to the northeast. And then as we get that next system coming through, it is bringing 40 and 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gust. As it strengthens up towards the northeast, it's bringing 40 and 50 over Florida, 40, almost 50 over Georgia and South Carolina. Gain up to 60 as it goes by North Carolina, Virginia, up to the northeast. 
Now northeast, when you get this storm coming by you now, you will be getting still the 40, 50, even 60 by the Boston Harbor. 70 is going to be out in the ocean, but you're going to have a lot of wind gusts coming with this first system. And when that second system comes by, you're going to have the same effect. You're going to have strong winds coming all the way up to the coast and going all the way up to the northeast, bringing 50s and 60s with it as well. A little bit stronger than what we have now. And if this goes a little bit more on a higher ridge, it's going to turn earlier and all this heavy winds could be over land. So I will keep you updated because so far it's showing up to 90 miles per hour wind gusts coming with the storm. I'm, I'm showing a 940, a 950 millibar pressure. Very strong system. And so far the latest run with the GFS, you can see how we get in that storm that we're getting now. But we also have a chance for some southern snowfall for Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi for the south as this goes up on that higher ridge. And you can see how you're not really getting much snow for the coast of the northeast because of all the warm temperatures coming up with this severe weather. It will be intercoastal. I'm going to show you the chances of the south getting snowfall as well as the northeast. And as you compare with the GFS and the Euro, you can see right here on Friday the 11th that we started getting our cold temperatures coming down, putting some sleet, some snow on a wraparound according to the GFS. And as it swings through, DFW has a chance to get in some snowfall. When you look at the Euro, it shows that it's just going to be rain because it's going to be way too warm for that to get any kind of snowfall. It's going to be a lot of rain. And as you push through, the Euro does show that northern Mississippi could be getting some snow on a wraparound. GFS shows that it will be there as well, and that is for Saturday. As it pushes through to the southeast, surface low gaining up, getting up to 985, putting a lot of snowfall on a wraparound. And the Euro sees that shot as well. It don't show it as much for Texas, but it does show when it takes that dip that you are going to be getting some snowfall possibility for Alabama, northern Georgia. And you see also as it goes up to the northeast that it does bring rainfall for the coast, snow for the intercoastal, and the GFS is confirming that as well. As it goes up, we're getting 983, 965, 954. Gets all the way down to a 944 for Canada. And this is going to bring some very strong, powerful winds. So if this goes up on a higher ridge, moves a little further to the west, all these winds y'all are going to feel. So I will keep you updated. It's still five days away. So as you look through all the ensembles and see what the chances for the southern snowfall to become, you can see in some of the ensembles that it does bring some southern snowfall towards Texas and for Louisiana as well. But when you look right here, this is your controlled member. This is an average of what's most likely going to happen. And so far, it's not showing you won't get any snowfall, guys. Maybe an inch for the Panhandle of Texas. That is it. And here's your shot for the southeast as you see the potential snowfall coming down with this system. It does show a lot of models with this potential snowfall. But if you look at your controlled member, you'll see once again that this will not be snow for the south. This will be a lot of rainfall, guys. And when you check to see how strong this system gets up in the northeast, you can see all the ensembles confirming that this will go to the northeast and strengthen to a very strong system. Now this right here is your controlled member, and so far it has it down to a 971, big huge system up in the northeast, big nor'easter, as it strengthens up to a 947, guys, going up to Canada. Very strong system. And the snowfall in the northeast, you see a lot of ensembles do show a lot of major snowfall. And you see how most of them shows it is going to be intercoastal, and you are going to be getting rain for the coast. And this is your controlled member right here showing that it will be a very high ridge and everybody's only going to get about an inch and the rest of y'all are going to be getting rainfall. And you can see that here on your precipitation that you're just going to be getting a lot of rainfall and not a lot of snow. And this storm has been showing for a while. When you look at the last few runs, you can see that in the northeast that it's been showing in the northeast, very strong system and it's right on the edge of getting rainfall on the coast snowfall on the intercoastal but it's been showing that for a minute that this storm is coming and it is trending guys this is going to be a strong nor'easter and so far i'm showing it's going to be very strong now so far that's the update on all the information i have for you i will keep you updated i just want to give you all an update on the alert of the cold weather as well as the storm in the northeast i will let you know what does come out of it god bless you all today may you have a very blessed monday out there stay positive start your week off great and it will be great. Just believe, guys. So all you got to do is believe. Your mind controls everything in your life.
Now today I want to share something very special with you that's very close to my heart. If you've never been here before, this is the best part of my channel, in my opinion. Probably a few others as well. Psalm 57. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yes, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall sin from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God. Above the heavens, let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Selah. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Amen. <laughs> Have a great day today, guys. God bless every single one of you. If you are planting or doing any kind of farming, please prepare for these temperatures. It won't be your highs for the day, but it will be two to three days of very cold temperatures, and that wouldn't be good. And above all, have a beautiful day today. <laughs> and all power, all glory, <laughs> does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. And he has plans for every single one of you. <laughs> How great that is. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a great Monday out there. I'll see you in the morning.